Hello, and welcome to another episode. In this one, I want to talk about the many, many ways that you can format strings in Python, as well as some advice on how to pick one and like how to stick to it. So let's let's jump into that. All right, so I'm gonna show you all of the various ways, well, <laughs> I'm probably gonna be missing a few, uh, but all the various ways that you can format strings in Python. And um, yeah, as well as like some of the gotchas with each of the different types and um, yeah. So <laughs> the very first way that people tend to learn string formatting in pretty much any language is by concatenation. Uh, and Python has much better ways to do it than concatenation, but I'm going to introduce that as our kind of first concept. And uh, just to, um, you know, have some stuff to format into a string, we're going to make a couple of objects and classes. Uh, we'll just do thing. Uh, we'll make a class as well. Name tuple. Actually, we'll do like, I don't know, point. Sure. Name tuple. Uh, make a point, and what else? Uh, some like, you know, temperature. Sure, <laughs> this will be, this will be in Celsius. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just have some like example stuff here and we're gonna format strings with these. So the very first approach that we'll show uh, and I would not suggest this, this is just for demonstration purposes only, uh, is concatenation-based string formatting. And concatenation basically just means sticking things together. And we're just gonna print these. So let's do like, hello plus thing. So the, the plus operator is the concatenation operator in Python. Uh, Python is strict about its concatenation in that the only things you can stick together are strings uh, or bytes, I guess, if you're working with bytes, but <laughs> we're not working with bytes today. Um, so if you try and plus like uh, an integer and a string together, foo plus one, two, three, you'll get a type error. Now, languages like JavaScript would course one of the arguments, but Python ensures that things are always strings. Uh, so if we want to do hello world plus, um, I am at uh, stir point dot x plus, and you can see that I've, I've already screwed this up. Um, let's uh, put this on a separate line. I am at x comma stir point dot y. Um, oops, we need a plus here. <laughs> Uh, and my temperature, temperature is, uh, now the problem with floats is there isn't really, well, there is kind of a way to format them. I always forget how it works. Let's see, format 21.567, this, no, <laughs> 0.2f, there we go. Okay, so this is how you can limit a, um, a floating point number to one digit <laughs> as a string by using the format built in. Uh, so we'll use that format temperature, temperature 0.1f. And I believe these format strings, you can look them up on uh, pyformat.info. Let me pull that up real quickly. Pyformat.info. We'll actually reference this website later, but this website is very useful for knowing how to format strings and we'll show like some of the other format approaches here. Um, but yeah, so you can see that. And if we run this now, assuming I got all my pluses in, uh, yeah, let's actually change one of the coordinates so that it looks kind of interesting. Hello world, I am at 1015 and my temperature is 21.65. Uh, so that's kind of the, the basics here. Um, one other thing that I wanted to show is how you can show the string representation of this. And in concatenation, you would do that with wrapper. Uh, Repper is a built-in that's supposed to present like how a programmer would view an object, uh, but for strings, it just puts quotes around it. So this is kind of our concatenation-based example. <clears throat> uh, I would not recommend this. <laughs> There's also uh, string templates. So moving on to the next one. And this is also another one that I wouldn't recommend unless you have a purpose-built reason to use it. Uh, so let's try and make a string template. Template. I always forget how these work because I don't use them very often. String.template. Uh, 
hello thing. Uh, it's gonna look very similar to the one above, but it's gonna use dollar sign strings, kind of similar to a shell substitution. I'm at x comma y, and my temperature is uh, temp. So this is kind of our, our string template here, and I believe we use the substitute method, uh, and we still have to do all of this manual formatting here. I'm going to try it without just so we can show the error, but <laughs> uh, thing equals wrapper thing. Uh, x equals stir point dot x, y equals stir point dot y. Um, sure, we'll tab this out. And temp equals, again, format temperature point one f. Uh, and I actually wanted to see what happens if we don't stir this. It might work, I don't remember. <laughs> You can tell how often I use template substitute. Uh, format specifier missing precision. Oh, because I typed this wrong. Point one f. There we go. Uh, oh, okay. So it works without having to stringify things. So it, it will automatically stringify stuff here. So that's cool. Uh, we have a typo. They're not the same. But you can see that we can produce the, the same result here. Okay, so that's string dot template. Those are both of the like not recommended ways, in my opinion. There are ways where you string dot template can be useful, like if you need to make your own templating languagey thing. Uh, like imagine you had to do XSS protection, you might extend string dot template and uh, substitute in escaped strings. So you're you're worrying about like HTML and other stuff. Uh, but let's move on to percent format, which I also don't like, <laughs> but it does at least work. Um, and we're going to basically just copy this same example here and then um, adjust it slightly. I'm going to be showing the, the template string separate from the formatting. Oh, actually, we could just do it in line. Yeah, let's just do it in line, whatever. Uh, so similar to this above, you would use percent, percent strings here. Uh, but here we're using percent parentheses thing r. Uh, r is going to be how we're going to convert that thing. Um, for this, we can just use percent %s, which is just the stringify conversion. Uh, it's not a dollar sign, it's a percent. Oh, and another thing to note, I kind of glossed over here. Uh, in Python, if you have strings that are butted up next to each other, so you can see there's no plus here. Uh, these are implicitly joined strings. I actually did a video on this earlier. I'll leave that in the description. Um, but we've got, let's see, percent temp. I think this is how this gets this formatted. Uh, my highlighter said it was, so that, that looks good. Uh, but you can put the format specifier directly in this string. I might be wrong there, but. <laughs> uh, and then you use percent with a tuple or a dictionary. In this case, because I'm using named substitution, I have to use a dictionary. I'll show you one without named substitution in a second. Uh, thing, thing, x, point dot x. This on the next line, so you can see that. And then y, point dot y, and then temp being temperature. So we're, we're, we're modding, because <laughs> this is the modulo operator, uh, we're modding a, uh, a mapping type into this, this string here. And you can see that it, it turns out the same. Now, in percent format, there's also another form of this, which uses uh, unnamed things. So if we copy this, we'll show that as well. And so instead of percent parentheses thing, it's just percent %r and percent %s and percent %.1f. Now, instead of a mapping here, we just have a tuple. We get rid of our mapping stuff here. Uh, we can actually probably put this on this line here, just so we can see all that, uh, and that'll that'll produce the same result. So you, you can see we're still producing the same result. Now the reason that percent format, in my opinion, is kind of clunky and problematic is if you see a string like this, uh, it's Difficult to know whether this will expand properly statically. Uh, bar could be a tuple, it could be a mapping, 
Uh, it could be a tuple with two elements, could be a tuple with one element. You might want this to show the tuple in your string. Um, like let's, let's do percent %r just so it's a little bit more explicit. Uh, you might want to show the tuple in your string and but it's kind of tricky to do that. So let's say bar is a tuple. If we do foo percent %r percent %bar, you'll see that it actually unpacked the tuple because it's a tuple of length one. Uh, now, if we wanted to show the actual tuple, we have to double tuple it. <laughs> double tuple. <laughs> uh, and this is like a little, a little bit clunky, in my opinion. But anyway, that's percent format. After percent format came dot format, which is new in... I don't remember when it was new. Some, sometime in Python 2. Uh, it got an upgrade in Python 2.6, or 2.7, somewhere around there. Uh, but dot format also has two forms like this. So it has a positional and a named argument, and it looks very similar to these ones. So I'm just going to copy and paste these. And finally, after, after dot format, we'll get to the one that I actually use. So instead of percent based substitutions, it uses braced substitutions. And you don't need to specify by default the format specifier, it will handle that for you. Now for uh, for things where you do specify the format specifier, you do a colon and then the specifier inside. So this will do floating points, one, one digit here. And then you use dot format and you pass keyword arguments for, uh, for named based substitution. And we'll pass positional arguments for not named based substitution. So. Uh, oh, right, this needs to be a representation. <laughs> so use bang r, this is this turns it into a representation. Um, cool, so that's that's when we just did, this is printing twice because I didn't update this one yet. Uh, so the next one is numbered uh, substitution. This is positional only, I forgot the bang r here. Now, uh, you can leave out the numbers here. They're implicit in Python 2.7 or above, but if you wanted to, you can number these. I would not recommend numbering them because it's tedious and if you ever reorder stuff, it's kind of a, a pain. And instead of percent here, we'll use dot format. And so this is the positional form of the dot format format. Uh, except I forgot my period there. There we go. Okay, so they're all working again. <laughs> Uh, now, prevent, I prefer percent or dot .format if I need to support older versions of Python. Uh, so anything before 3.6 will not support f strings, which is the very last thing that we'll show. F strings. And we'll take these two examples again. Now, the conversion from dot .format to f strings is actually super easy. Oh, actually, I wanted to show one other thing first. Um, before we go on to f strings. So let's, let's comment this out first. Um, one thing that you can do with dot format that you can't really do with the other format strings is if you have something that's passed in here, you can access attributes of it. So instead of doing X and Y separately here, we can just do point equals point, and we can access attributes of that object directly in here. And you'll see that that, that still works. It's this one, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of like a, a neat little extension to, um, to dot format. Now, this is also kind of a, a scary thing as well. So if you pass in, if you're ever dealing with format strings that are user generated content, this means that somebody could poke around your objects that are at memory. So it's, it's not always a good idea. Well, it's never a good idea to take untrusted input as a format uh, string. You'd want to do some sort of sanitization or sandboxing, although sandboxing Python is particularly tricky. Um, so the really cool thing about f strings is if we take the format string that we already had, uh, we don't actually have a positional form, so we can delete this one. If we take the format string that we had above, we can actually just delete this and put f's in front of these, and it works. Now, the variable is called temperature above, so you have to use the actual variable name, but this will substitute stuff directly just based on this special string prefix. And this is new in Python 3.6, and you'll see if we run this, we get the same result, which is pretty nifty. Uh, but anyway, those are all the <laughs> crazy different ways that you can format strings in Python. Let me just scroll this up so we can see a few more of them on screen. Uh, these are kind of the three that matter. Uh, but anyway, my suggestion is if you're targeting Python 3.6 or above, like use f strings, they're pretty great. Um, oh, another, another cool thing. 
uh, about f strings in Python 3.8 or above is you can put an equal sign at the end of it and it'll show uh, kind of a, a neat little debugging tool so you can kind of see like what the expression was and what the value was. Um, but anyway, my advice is use f strings. <laughs> And you might say, well, how do I maintain consistency? And Python always says like, oh, there's one correct way to do things, uh, but there's like a million choices here. Uh, and my recommendation is to find a linter or a code formatter that will upgrade these for you. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit biased here because I have written one myself uh, called PyUpgrade. Oh, that's not what I want to do. And one of the things that PyUpgrade does is it'll convert, it'll kind of upgrade each of the different format string types. So you'll see like, uh, it will automatically rewrite to f strings. It'll it'll rewrite percent format to dot format, and and you know, if the dot format is then convertible to f strings, it'll go all the way to f strings. Um, but yeah, find a find a code formatter, find a linter that that checks this for you. That way, you can ma maintain consistency. But hopefully, this was helpful. <laughs> There's quite quite a lot going on here. Um, I would also suggest going to pyformat.info if you want more information about you know, the various format specifiers and conversion operators that are available for these. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.